So you want to start candle making, maybe just as a hobby, or maybe eventually even run a candle making business, but you just don't have the budget to even get started. Find yourself kind of scraping for change just to even get started, just to get a few things to get going. I completely understand, but don't worry, you're not alone. And that is the purpose of today's video, how to get started making candles on a budget. Hi everyone, my name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. Thank you all for being here as usual. But if you are new here and you are interested in any candle making or candle business content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on that bell for notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, so let's talk about how we can get started making candles on a budget. We're all coming from different places with different budgets to get started. You might not have a budget to get started at all, but like most things, it takes some money to get started. So I'm not gonna tell you in this video that you can get started candle making for free. I mean, it's technically possible if you can find someone just to give you some supplies to get going, sure, you could start dabbling, but it's gonna cost you some money to get going. However, it doesn't have to break the bank. I'm gonna tell you how you can get started for not a whole lot of upfront investment. Some of you might already have the amount you're gonna to need to get started after today's video. Others might just need to save on a few expenses, cut back or save up for a few weeks or a month, and you should be good to go. So over the course of this video, I'm going to share with you a few tips that help keep your costs low, especially in the early stages and getting your feet wet with candle making. And then I'm also going to give you a, let's call it a $250 candle making kickstart. It's, it's going to be a little bit of a guide, a little bit of a plan for you to get started for just a couple hundred bucks. And I'm going to even show you that that $250 can go a long way not just to get started and learn a little bit about candle making, but also to do some testing, get some experience, grow some confidence, dabble with a few different fragrances, and even have some product remaining at the end. Let's go ahead and get started. So my first tip when you get started candle making is a very common tip that you're gonna hear from other candle makers and other candle making educators, and that is to start off with a kit. What is the purpose of the kit? It's just to get you some exposure to the industry and to making the product itself. It's almost like a handcrafted crash course just to make sure you're even going to like it. The whole purpose of the kit is to see if you're going to enjoy making candles because if you don't enjoy the process, nothing else past this point will even matter. There are a lot of candle making kits out there with a lot of different types of waxes and different styles of candles. And so definitely shop around before you just pick the first kit you see. And those kits are gonna range anywhere from 20 bucks up to 50 or 60 bucks. Just give it a shot, see if you actually enjoy making candles. And you're gonna learn a little bit about process as well. So the kit doesn't only just see if you have any interest in candle making, but it's also teaching you along the way. After you've used a kit and you've decided, sure, I'd like to uh, explore this, this craft a little bit further, then my next tip would be to start shopping for supplies, but try to source them locally, at least early on in the beginning stages. There are great candle supply companies all over the country, all over the world, and as you grow into this industry and settle in and start to grow either as a hobbyist or a business, you're going to start finding certain suppliers that you really like and really trust, or you just love their products so much that that's where you're gonna go. But early on, you can spend a lot in shipping unless you're ordering bulk and volume amounts. So my advice early on is to try to keep those costs low and eliminate shipping from the equation completely find local suppliers. Unfortunately, not all of us have a really close local raw material supplier, but there's a lot more out there than you might expect. So just do some research, look in the area. You're not necessarily looking for perfect products or perfect materials at this point. Again, you're just looking for a decent amount of selection of materials to get started. So search local, try to source your materials locally early on, and you'll definitely save yourself a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of headache. My next tip is to start with fragrance oil samples. Fragrance oils, as you will come to learn, cost a lot of money. They will make up a large portion of your cost of raw materials, along with wax and containers. But fragrance oils are expensive, and there are tons and tons out there. And before you know it, you can become kind of a fragrance oil addict and you're wanting to buy everything you see and everything you smell. And it will get very, very expensive. For example, an average 16 ounce bottle of fragrance oil can cost $25. Uh, now, there are some lower than that and there are some higher than that, but usually somewhere between $20 and $25 per pound is what you could expect to pay for fragrance oils once you really get into this. So my advice early on is to uh, not get overwhelmed and not to dive too deep into fragrance oils. Instead, find a couple suppliers and buy a sample pack or take advantage of some of these 
$1 or 99 cent of fragrance oil samples. You can find those at Candle Science. You can find them at Aztec Candle Company. You can find them at Flaming Candle. You can find it at Maple Street. There's a lot of suppliers out there that will offer you one ounce sample bottles. My advice is to spend, you know, five to 10 bucks just getting a little assortment. Now you will receive some oils in the kit you order. So this is an optional part of the process, but if you're going to sample fragrance oils, definitely start with a sample of those. It's not so much that it's enough of a product to test with. You're not necessarily trying to make your finished product out of these oils. Right now at this stage, you're trying to just look for something that you like. What type of fragrances appeal to you and what is the type of fragrance that you want to start off working with? Because as you get started, you're going to be starting simple and you're only going to be starting with a few oils. So start with those samples, find out what you like, and then we'll use that information here in a little bit. Now the same thing goes with waxes. There are a lot of different wax types out there. Waxes are very complicated and very challenging because there's paraffin wax, there's soy wax, there's parasoys, there's coconut, there's coconut soy blends, there's coconut paraffin blends, there's beeswax blends, there's apricot, apricot. There's just a lot of different options out there. So my advice here is to definitely do your research before you invest on anything with waxes and see what might appeal to you the most just based off reviews and based off the qualities that you can find about the different waxes out there. Back to what I was saying earlier though about starting with a local supplier, you're gonna be limited to what the suppliers have. So still, at this point, my advice would be find a local supplier, see what they have, ask them for samples. A lot of them will give you some free samples. Now most do charge you for some type of uh, one pound or 10 pound bag or slab or something like that, but a lot of them will give you a small sample if you ask them. So don't be afraid to ask, it doesn't hurt. Even if you have to pay a little bit, start with a couple samples, before you go shopping, narrow down a few things that you have in mind that you're looking for, and when you get to the supplier, tell them what interests you the most. That they'll help you pick out a couple samples, take those samples home with you, play around with them a little bit. Those are gonna be your starting points. Those are gonna be what you decide from early on what waxes you're gonna work with. That does not mean you gotta stick with those waxes forever or even for the next few months, but it's a good starting point and it's better than buying an entire case of wax going forward. I guess if I had to summarize what I'm suggesting here, when you're starting out is to keep things simple. Keep things low cost, simple, and close to home. You don't wanna to have to spend too much money on shipping. You don't wanna to have to overspend on too many different products. Keep things simple, order some samples, and just start getting an idea of what type of materials you like to work with. Don't forget that very first kit you did is the key to all of this because that kit alone will tell you did you like working with the wax that was in that kit? If so, you could start with that wax. If not, then you know to try a different wax. Also, that kit will include some fragrance oils that you may or may not enjoy. And they should also include some wicks, so you have at least a little bit idea of what wicks to start with or not to start with. Again, you are going to learn so much over the first few months and the first year of candle making that it will blow your mind. But if you're just getting started, keep things simple for now. Do not get overwhelmed. It is very, very easy to get overwhelmed with too much content, too much information. There's channels like this, there's Facebook groups, there's so much information out there that you can get information overload. So my suggestion is to watch, research, and learn, take notes and document. But when it comes to starting out with the actual process, Keep things simple early on. There's plenty of time and plenty of room to grow as you develop. So I also promised you a $250 candle making Kickstarter to really, really start diving in with some candle making. So what do I mean by a Kickstarter? Well, as I mentioned earlier in the introduction of this video, it's hard to get started in this for free. So you do wanna spend some money, but I'm gonna show you how just using $250 that you can commit to starting off with this candle making journey can really go a long way to tell you a lot about the process, a lot about the materials, and whether or not this is something you wanna continue doing long-term. And you'll end up with plenty of product as well. So the first chunk of this $250 that I suggested you invest from the very beginning is on a candle making kit. On average, I'm gonna go ahead and say that that costs $40. Again, you can find them as low as 20 or 25, and you can find them up to 60 or even higher, depending on certain kind of styles, jars, and different kinds of waxes. The next thing is after you've tested and sampled some waxes, I'm gonna ask you to select a 10 pound slab of wax from your supplier that you wanna start with. This can be one of the waxes that you've already tested and sampled before that you liked, or it might not be one of the ones that you've already sampled because you didn't like those waxes very much and you're simply choosing this based off of reviews or suggestions from the supplier. Either way, get yourself a 10 pound bag or slab of wax. Next, I want you to settle on two fragrance oils to start with. 
This might be from some of the samples you've used earlier. This might be from uh, the kit that you've already used, or you might just find two that have been highly recommended to you to start with. And I would suggest buying two eight ounce bottles of fragrance oils, two different fragrance oils, Eight ounces is plenty. There's no need to get a 16 ounce bottle or certainly anything larger than that at this point. The next is to buy 24 jars. Now, typically the best way to do this is to run up to your local Walmart or some store like that and just find a 12 pack of ball mason jars or jelly jars or simple straight sided jars, anything like that, somewhere in the kind of half pint or eight ounce type of size jar. Those are usually gonna be found in like the canning section at your local store. Then of course you are gonna need some wicks and some miscellaneous supplies like wick stickers, maybe some type of pouring pitcher if your kid didn't come with it, some random supplies like that. I'm not gonna get into the details of making the candles in this video. I have plenty of videos on making candles on the channel, check them out. And I even have another video talking about the candle making supplies to get started with. That video includes kind of required or, or needed supplies as well as some optional ones that just help with the process. I will link that video as well up above and in the description if I remember. Uh, but that video can help you get started with some of these supplies as well. And then using some of the information you've learned either from the suppliers or candle making videos like on this channel or Facebook groups or wherever and make your first set of candles. Now I would start with just a couple of candles at a time because you're trying to learn as you go. And the idea at this stage is to simply start experimenting, start testing and start making some candles on your own. So I should say before we go any further that the materials you've bought to this point, 10 pounds of wax, two eight ounce bottles of fragrance oils, 24 jars, that's enough materials to start making around 20 to 24 candles. The jars that I recommended to you will hold about six to seven ounces of wax, meaning a six to seven ounce candle. Uh, and that means that 10 pounds of wax will get you somewhere around 20 to 25 candles. The two eight ounce bottles of fragrance oil will be enough to make that many as well. So at this stage, you can already make about 20 to 25 candles, plus or minus a few right out of the gate. And at this point of your candle making journey, most of those are gonna be testers and gonna be experimented with and end up being scrap. But either way, you've still got a chance to make about 20 candles. The next tip is to simply rinse and repeat. Buy another 10 pounds of wax. It could be the same wax if you were happy with it, or if you weren't, buy a different 10 pound of wax and let's try the process again. Also choose two different fragrance oils this time. And then of course, the other supplies you bought are gonna be reusable, except you might also need some more wicks at this point. You're gonna make another batch of 20 to 25 candles. You're gonna test those candles again. And so at this point, you've now made 40 to 50 different candles. And the key now is to start testing and testing. You should already be noticing which candles are fails and which candles are passes, which ones are burning the best, which ones need improvement. And you're really starting to dial in already with the 40 to 50 candles you've made and the materials that you're using you're starting to learn a lot about your wax, a lot about your oils and your wicks. And you've already learned a lot in this process to help you with the next batch and the next batch and so on. So let's add up what we've spent to this point. So out of the $250, so far we've spent about $40 on the candle making kit. Let's call it an average of $25 for that 10 pound bag or slab of wax. We'll say another $25 on the two eight ounce bottles of fragrance oil. And then we're gonna say another $20 on the jars. Now again, we're just talking about those little small mason jars or the jelly jars that you can find at a local grocery store, for example. You should be able to easily get that for $20 or less. And then I reserved another $30 for wicks and miscellaneous supplies. It's not gonna cost you anywhere near that for wicks unless you're buying several sample packs, which is definitely not a bad idea, but wicks plus some miscellaneous supplies if you need to buy a pouring pot or a pitcher or some mixing spoons or something like that. Again, I have a whole video dedicated to candle making supplies that can help you kind of narrow down what you wanna get started with. But $30 is really more than you're gonna need just for the wicks and a few supplies. Anything beyond that is completely optional for you to get started. That leaves you with about $10 remaining of that 250. And my suggestion with that $10 is to pull up a chair at Starbucks or your favorite local coffee shop, maybe order yourself a nice latte or a pink drink or even a slice of lemon loaf and just spend a few hours documenting everything that you've done and learned to this point, reflecting on the processes in your experience, determining if this is something you wanna continue with organizing everything that you've done to this point, and then start planning if you wanna continue. Start thinking about what you wanna do next. What are the next steps? Do I wanna continue this as a hobby? Is this something I could see myself doing as a business down the road? And if so, what things should I be considering? But again, this is still early, so keep it simple. At this point, I'm merely suggesting that you document, reflect, organize, and plan your next steps. Those next steps could be very, very minimal like Let's do this process a third time. Anything. The key is just taking a little bit of time to yourself, sitting back, stepping back from everything you've done at this point, and making a decision on what to do next. 
Now, the last thing I want to touch on, and, and I was almost hesitant to even bring this up in this video because it's really not the purpose to get into details on this, but I know some of you are probably wondering, what if I were selling my candles at this point? If I had a business, would I have made any profit with what we just did? Well, the purpose at this stage isn't to worry about profit at all or even worry about the business. This is all before you get started as a business, before you start worrying about selling your candles. But just to give you a little bit of perspective and insight into what it could look like for you, you've spent $250 to this point, but some of that's one-time cost. The candle kit is the one-time cost unless you just optionally choose to do more of those. Some of your tools and supplies, uh, miscellaneous supplies were one-time cost. So the actual cost of what you've spent on wax and wicks and fragrance oils to this point per 20 to 25 candles was about $70. And then of course we did that twice, so we'll say $140 worth of materials. Now you've made 40 candles, okay, 40 candles. Let's say half of those candles were used for testing uh, or they were trash or waste or whatever. And remember, at this stage, most of those candles will be testers. Most of them will not be sellable candles. But after you've tested and after you've found the winning combination and you start making actual finished products for sale, let's say you decided to sell each one of those candles for $10. Well, first of all, as a brand new candle maker starting a, a hand poured, handcrafted small business, you could probably sell those candles for more than $10. A lot of people start off with those same jars selling for 12 or even up to 15. But let's say 10 to keep it simple and keep it competitive in the market. So most of the candles at this point aren't gonna be sellable, right? They're, they're testers, you're learning as you go, but down the road, you're making products that are meant to sell. But just for the sake of argument, let's say that only half of the candles you made out of these 40 were available to sell. That leaves you 20 of them. 20 times 10 is $200. You, you had 140 in expenses. That would mean that even if hypothetically you're only selling half of the candles you made down the road, you still would have made $60 in this situation. But again, that's not even realistic. We base these numbers, those numbers off of actually starting off by buying new materials and buying supplies and testing as you go down the road. when you've got an effective, efficient process of making candles to sell, that number is only going to go up. I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight that even in a testing, even in a world where you're still learning as you go, even if you had only 20 candles available to sell at the end of this process, you still would have made a profit. So I hope it gives you a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of insight, and I really oversimplified that. I understand that there's a lot of other things involved we didn't talk about, and, and I'm fully aware that I'm oversimplifying the cost and, and the, the profitability of this, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the numbers we we're working with. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I want, I want you to feel confident about being able to start candle making on a budget. We all have different budgets to work with, but that doesn't mean you can't get started in some way. I would number one suggest with starting off with a kit just to make sure you enjoy it. Just develop some type of systematic plan like the one I outlined for you. That way you can commit a set dollar amount like $250 or maybe $500 and you can have a detailed outline plan of what you're going to do with those dollars and how you're going to put them to work for you. Thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Either way, get yourself a 10 pound pack. Either way, get your 10... <laughs>